tell Molly she can't do something, she's going to show you how much she can. Hello and welcome back to my channel for another story time. You guys always love a good story time and girl trust me, I have many, many, many more in me. <laughs> um, so this one was very spur of the moment. I was not at all planning to sit down and film this video, but my mom and I were just talking about it and I was going to make a little TikTok about it. By the way, go follow me over on TikTok at Molly Burke Official. We have so much fun over there. But I was like, I feel like I should make another video about that. And my mom's like, yeah, you really should just like sit down and tell the story. Because when this happened to me, I had 5,000 subscribers. So most of you have obviously joined me well after that period in my life. That would have been, God, 2015? Summer of 2015, was it? I got it. It was the summer of 2016. I'm almost certain. Yeah, it was because it took me two years to get 5,000 subscribers. Just saying, takes perseverance, you guys. Just keep pushing through. If you're a small creator and you feel like you're never gonna make it, like just keep making content and don't care about the amount of followers. Care about what you're creating and what you're putting out into the world and like why you believe it's important and the rest will follow. That's just a side note, okay? I feel like a lot of people get discouraged and feel like they're never gonna make it and they give up and they give up too soon. Most of us don't make it overnight, okay? So two years in, posting one to two videos a week and I was at 5,000 subscribers. I had been in a relationship for two and a half years. Again, you will have known my ex, Matt, if you were a part of my early days on YouTube. And we had broken up after two and a half years and like six and a half years of being best friends. So it was quite a hole in my life. And I was 21 years old and I was like, I'm a free bird. I should big girl date. Because I had only like dated as a young baby, you know? I had entered my relationship with Matt at 19. So all of my dating prior to that was between the ages of 14 to 19. And so every guy I dated, it was like, oh, we met through music. We met through school. We met through work, whatever. I had never like gone to a bar and met a guy. I had never swiped on a dating app and met a guy. It was all through like friendships or connections like that, that grew into something romantic. And so I was in that phase where like Tinder, which was the first kind of big dating app, had come out when I was in my relationship with Matt. So I had never tried it. And so I was like, you know what? I've only ever dated through like real life connections. This could be something interesting to experiment with and try. And so um, about five or six months after my breakup, I made a Tinder profile, started going on some dates and it was going pretty well. So I made the profile like mid to end of January, I believe. And this scenario happened in May. So I had already like gone on a couple of dates with different guys on Tinder, obviously none that were successful. I kind of had like my system down. I wasn't putting that I was blind in my profile for a number of reasons. Number one, safety. Number two, if I have a very short space to tell you about myself, I don't think blindness is the most interesting or important thing to tell you about me. So I never put it in my profile. And so what I would do is once I had matched with a guy, I would like have a conversation. And if I felt like it was going well and I was maybe going to meet up with them, I would then tell them. So I was pretty used to this by now. I found creative and fun ways to do it. If it wasn't naturally coming up in conversation, then I would do it by kind of forcing the issue by being like, hey, let's play two truths and a lie or tell me three facts about yourself and I'll tell you three about me, things like that. And so with this guy, it ended up just coming up naturally. I can still remember when I matched with this guy and I was getting frustrated because Matt is such a common name for guys born in the like 80s and 90s. I mean, I'm sure it is still very common for like 2000s babies too, but very, very, very common. Like everybody had at least one to three guys named Matt in their class growing up in my age. And so I was getting frustrated because like all these guys on a dating app were named Matt. And I was like, oh great, am I gonna end up dating somebody with the same name as my ex? And this guy had the same name. His name was Matthew. I was on a train ride home from a speaking engagement in Ottawa. So I've been in Ottawa and I was going home to Toronto via the train, via rail. Huh? Via rail is the name of the train. Anyways, we were on the train, my mom and I, and she was swiping for me because we were just bored. We were like almost home at this point and we were bored. 
So she describing these profiles to me and she sees this guy and he has like a photo with an elephant Which is my favorite animal and he has a bunch of photos traveling and he has a photo of him like skiing or snowboarding or something Like he just had a bunch of photos that resonated with me. I love travel. I love elephants. I love skiing So it just felt like you know, hey, this would be potentially a good connection So we swipe him and it was a match and it was funny because he was from Ajax I lived in Oakville. Those are not close But I guess that's where we had kind of been in the area of when we were swiping on the train I was still new to the app So I didn't quite understand that it picked up your pinpoint where you were at that time Not where you the pinpoint of where you lived so I wouldn't have actually been swiping if I had realized that it was picking up from that area, not my area, but that's besides the point. Ajax, by the way, is in fact where Shawn Mendes is from. But at the time, I was hosting TV shows. I was the host of two TV shows, and they actually filmed in Ajax. So I would go to Ajax once a week. So it was kind of one of those things where I was like, you know what, I'll talk to the guy because at the end of the day, like, if we end up having a connection and deciding to go out, like, I could go out for a drink with him or something after I'm done filming for the day in Ajax or whatever. So it wasn't like a lost cause to me, so I kept talking to him. I realized I should throw the blindness thing out there because he did ask me out. So I was like, okay, well, I have to tell him now. I'm not just going to show up and not have told him. So I was trying to figure out how I wanted to play it with this guy, what my move was going to be. This time I decided to just like slip it into conversation because it did end up kind of naturally progressing to a place where I could because we were talking about like the physical activities we loved. So he was talking about all the sports that he loves to play. I was talking about the sports that I enjoy. And his thing, like one of his favorite sports was soccer. And if you guys have followed me, you've probably at one point or another heard me mention that I was really into soccer as a kid. Like, I feel like at a certain time in my life, soccer was my identity. Like, I was just very passionate about soccer. One of my best friends to this day I met because we were on the same soccer team and we actually both got scouted to go play competitive or rep soccer, which is what we called it where I'm from. I ended up having to quit rep soccer because when you play competitive soccer you play all year round you train all winter you play in the summer and in winter because i live in canada you had to train indoors and the indoor facility where we needed to train was dimly lit and they tried everything they could to get the lighting as bright as they could but i could not see enough because red and is pigmentosa takes your night blindness first i couldn't see in dim or dark lighting at that point and so it was too dark so every time i would go to practice in the winter i was like running into girls and it was not safe for me my teammates or anybody so i had to quit and i was devastated but that's how i found skiing because my parents had to like take me out of soccer midwinter they were like okay what's a blind accessible sport that we can transition her into so she's not like devastated that she's losing her favorite sport and so i found skiing so it kind of was a, a blessing in disguise because skiing is like my absolute passion i love skiing so anyways i kind of was like oh that's so funny i played competitive soccer but i ended up having to quit when i started losing my vision and he was like what and i was like oh yeah and so i just kind of like talked about it and i like i did with any guy i would say just so you know, I'm super comfortable with my blindness and I want you to be as well. So feel free to ask me any questions because I know you might have never met a blind person. You might be feeling a little uncomfortable or apprehensive. So I, I want to make sure you feel comfortable. So please feel free to ask me anything you want. And he goes, well, how blind are you? I said, you know, I use a guide dog and I can read braille and I, I use voice software on my computer and my phone. You know, I just have a bit of light and shadow perception left. And he just goes, well, then I can't date you. And I had never faced that. Maybe I was like blessed, protected in some way from the realities, but I had never had that happen. Like I, I had never experienced, I had experienced when I was much younger pre ever dating guys saying things like that. Like when I was in grade eight, this very hurtful thing happened where I, we had like a locker rooms, the girls and the boys locker rooms. And I was walking down the hallway past the guys gym locker room cause I had already finished changing and a bunch of the guys were still in there from my class. One of them was like joking around because one of the most popular guys in school happened to like me. I don't know why. I think he liked me because I was the only girl who didn't like him. So I was like hard to get. Anyways, do you remember? Was that? Oh, yes, yes. Anyways, he liked me and he was a popular guy and I was going blind. I was not very popular at this point. And so I think his guy friends were kind of like making fun of him as I walked by, not knowing that I was out there obviously, but sound travels in the halls. And he had said, 
I feel bad for Molly. Like, I don't know why any guy would ever date her because dating a blind girl is like buying something you know is already broken and no man is dumb enough to do that. Which you can imagine as I'm going blind at 14 years old and having never had a first kiss, I was like devastated by this. I was already at such a low point that I didn't need that, you know? And so, and I had had other guys, like I had another guy that year be like, who, who had a disability. This was what was so frustrating. He himself had a disability, yet he said, oh, like, I would never ask a girl like you to the dance because you're blind. And I had another guy in school say like, you're pretty and you're smart and you're cute, you're totally my type if you could see. So I did have that back when I was like 14, but I kind of, by the time I was 21, had had multiple like positive successful relationships. I'd gone on many dates and I'd never had something happen like that in the real dating world. Like I kind of, by that point in my life, had chalked that up to like dumb boys being dumb and not being men. You know, because by the time I was 15, I had like my first relationship that was really wonderful and had really positive experiences. So I'd never had something like in the real adult world of dating, had a guy say anything like this. And certainly not in my Tinder experiences. Like every other guy I had told that I was blind on Tinder didn't react like this, that's for sure. So I was kind of shocked. And I can remember exactly where I was sitting on the couch in my office, in my home office at my parents' place. And my heart just started racing, like I was like, like, this is so weird. And I replied and I was like, what do you mean? And he said, I could only date a girl who can surf and you're blind, so you can't surf. And like my blood instantly boiled. Steam was coming out of my ears. And I think a lot of my followers who are watching this who are also disabled can probably relate to this exact feeling. This feeling of like able-bodied people telling you what you're capable of. You don't know me. You don't know my life. You don't know my circumstance, my experiences, my capabilities, my limitations. You know nothing. I get to define what I am capable of, not you. I define what my limits are, not you. And so I basically said that back to him. I was like, how dare you? Like, you don't have the right to say that. And he unmatched me. He like didn't even have the balls to like having a conversation about this. He was just like, mm, unmatch. And I like ran to my parents. I was like, can you believe this? I was just irate. I was so frustrated. And I was honestly just really hurt. Like I was really hurt. I was like, is this really like what guys think behind the scenes? Like maybe this is why none of these dates are working out. Like maybe this is secretly what all guys think. Like I just, you know, you go down this like rabbit hole when you're wounded um, of like negative self-talk. And I did that. I kind of like made a big long Facebook post just privately like on my personal Facebook. I'll pop it up here if I can still find it. I'll have to scroll back years. I probably won't. That's a lot of time. I was just really upset about it. And I always remember you stomping into the kitchen and almost like, like what? stomping your feet up and down. Like, how dare this person say that? And we were like looking at you like, what? And then you were telling us and, and we were like, oh. Okay. And the reality is it's like, I get that dating a blind person isn't for everyone, but it wasn't about that. It was a, it was the fact that he, that was his reason. Like nothing else about my blindness, that, that was his reason. And I feel like it's a stupid thing for multiple reasons. You live in Ajax, not exactly known for surfing. Like nobody's like, ooh, you know where we should go for some hot surfing? The greater Toronto area, you have some sick waves. Like no, people are like, let's go to SoCal. Let's go to Australia. Like there's many places you go in the world to surf. Toronto's not one of them. If he's swiping on Tinder in Ajax, there's gonna be many women he comes across who cannot surf, who are sighted, okay? Surfing is a very specific skill and it takes a lot of opportunity to just even be in a space where you get to learn that skill. So if he's like, my non-negotiables with dating, number one, must be able to surf, you might wanna move somewhere else because you're gonna have a hard time, Matthew. I was just pissed for multiple reasons and I just thought it was so ridiculous. And it was just a few days later that I was scrolling on my Facebook and I went to a school for the blind, made these two videos recently about that experience. I have a lot of friends on Facebook from the school for the blind and one of them had written that he was so excited to go learn how to surf this summer. And I hit that guy up. I was like, Steven, you need to tell me everything you know because he's fully blind from birth, I believe. I was like, where are you doing it? How, when, what, where? Give me all the deets. And he's like, oh, it's this organization called Extreme Mobility or XMO Camps that teaches blind and visually impaired teens and young adults how to do things like surf. And I was like, 
hook me up. The registration was already closed, but I was not going to take no for an answer. So I wrote them this big heartfelt email, this big long letter about the whole experience and the whole story and what I do and why I cared so much and why it meant so much to me. And they called me and they were like, yeah, we'd, we'd love to have you. I was so excited. And the craziest thing is this was just like literally a few days later that this happened. I remember being in shock. I ran out to my parents <laughs> once again to the kitchen. And I was like, you guys, I'm gonna learn how to surf. <laughs> like, it's just a typical. <laughs> Tell Molly she can't do something, she's going to show you how much she can. The craziest part was when I, they do it one week of the summer and one week of the winter. Summer is in Los Angeles, winter is in Colorado. That's all they do. This week that's in SoCal, I happened to line up with my first ever VidCon. At 5,000 subscribers, I was somehow invited as a feature creator to VidCon to speak on a couple of panels about accessibility on the internet and disability on YouTube. At the time, there was hardly any creators. Like, it's incredible to see how many disabled creators there are on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube, making a full-time living doing this. Because let me tell you, in 2016, that was absolutely not the case. There was a small handful of us, and that was it. And most of us were very much so not making a living. In fact, I remember talking to the biggest disabled creator at the time, and he was not making a living at it. It was definitely not where it is today. Because they had such a small pool of disabled creators to pull from, even though I only had 5,000 subscribers and you usually have like hundreds of thousands to get invited to VidCon as a feature creator, they invited me. And the day VidCon ended was the day XMO began. And they were both in Los Angeles. And I was like, what are the chances? And the week before I was going to VidCon, I was in New York City speaking at the United Nations on behalf of the Canadian government talking to all these other countries about how to cultivate leadership in the disabled community. And so I had like three weeks in a row lined up of just like once in a lifetime life-changing experiences that were so unbelievably incredible. And it was a very special time in my life. And I can remember um, VidCon ending and I was so exhausted because you truly just like hardly eat, hardly sleep. I had no voice left and I my mom brings me to this train station and plops me on the train with Gallup and my luggage and Mindy, one of the, the co-founders of XMO, picks me up and drives me to this house. How did you feel on the train? Because I remember you were nervous. It was, it was, of course, yeah, I was so, was so nervous. Yeah. I was like, what have I gotten myself into? I think you did bring a, a, a big suitcase with Gallup's food. And oh yeah. It was a lot to manage. I remember getting you on that train going, and it was like stopped at the station for just a little bit and then we had to get you on with the bag and it was it was a lot. It was crazy. And you were exhausted. Like, I was, was exhausted crazy. and I, I was like, this, where am I sending my daughter? I had this custom made VidCon shirt on and a hat and I it was so exciting. It really was so exciting. And they drive me to this house where they had like the first night and I was sitting at the table and I was like zombie, just zombie faced from the lack of sleep and food for days. And I'm like eating my dinner like a zombie and this guy comes up to me. Oh, this is so special. And he taps me on the shoulder and he crouches down to like be kind of like, cause I was sitting in a chair and he was standing and he crouches down to be like eye level with me. And he's like, hey, my name's Brayden. I just wanted to introduce myself. I heard about what happened and I'm just really excited you're here. And if you guys know, that is my best friend. Oh my God, why am I getting emotional? He's like my best friend. He's like, my non-romantic soulmate in life. He is, we, we are like each other's rocks in many ways. And like, that was the moment we met. And oh, he's just so special to me. And I love him so, so much. He's my family, like, isn't he mom? He's yeah, just- he's super person. It's, he's fantastic. I know you guys have met him a number of times, but- and I you guys, love him so much. And you ask like how we met. And I like, I've mentioned the story and we joke about it, but I haven't really like fully sat down and told you guys the whole background. And yeah, he's just like one of the most special people I hold in my heart so closely. And so that was like the moment we met and it was like instant. We just became inseparable best friends that whole week. We were constantly laughing. We were constantly together. And I won't tell too much of it because it's Brayden's story, but he had just come out and um, he was raised very Christian and had lost a lot of his friends and was really struggling with people not accepting him and his sexuality. And when he told me, I was just like, okay, cool. Like, like when he was like, by the way, I'm gay. I was like, okay, cool. It was like a huge moment for him, which I didn't realize at the time, 
but because he had never come out to anybody and then just say, oh, okay. Like every time he had ever come out, it was like a really dramatic experience. He lost people that he loved. And so it was like, he had just been fired for being gay. I'll link the article he wrote about it below. It's a whole thing. I'm so proud of him for like putting this person on blast because how he was treated was horrible. So he had just lost his job because he was gay. Like it was like a really bad time in his life. And obviously like I was struggling as well in, in certain ways. And so it was just, we just became each other's everything that week. Like we just, like everybody was just constantly like oh my god there's molly and brayden together laughing and um we just had so much fun that week and he was so determined to like help me surf and like have that experience and so i want to say a couple of things about the whole thing because i did surf here are some bad photos and i was really bad at it but i was so determined to get up i swallowed so much salt water it was horrendous i felt nauseous I was coughing. I have really bad balance, as do many blind people, because um, balance is a combination of eyes and ears, and surfing takes a lot of balance. So I can remember I was not good at it, but everybody there was so determined. They had their best surfing coach there with me. Everybody was like so supportive and just really wanted me to have this moment. And I did, like I stood up and I rode a wave. It was just one, like I only managed to do one wave, but it was something, like that was enough for me, you know? And. I guess the reason I want to retell this story because I know so many of you weren't with me at 5,000 subscribers and don't know fully this whole story and this whole experience and how my friendship with Brayden really came to be in such detail. I think there's a lot of things that can be taken from this. Number one is sometimes something that feels like a really big negative in your life can turn into the most beautiful thing. Without that stupid Matthew from Tinder, I wouldn't have met my absolute best friend in the world. And Brayden is somebody that I will have in my life forever. And if that hadn't happened with the guy, that guy, Matthew, on Tinder, like, I could have just gone on one bad date with him. If he had not said that, I could have just, like, gone on a bad date with him and that would have been it. And I would have never gone to Eximo. I would have never met Brayden. By the way, I'll link Eximo if you're blind and want to learn more about it. Can't recommend it enough and it's all free, so check it out. And so, also, if you're sighted and looking to donate to a charity, such a worthwhile charity. Sometimes things that happen and you question like, why did this happen to me? There is a reason. And Brayden was my reason that Matthew from Tinder came to be. And I know that for sure. And the other thing that I wanna say is when somebody tries to tear you down, whether it be somebody at school who's being mean to you, a teacher telling you you're not good enough and you'll never accomplish something, somebody telling you you don't do something good enough or you're too slow or you're not smart enough or you're not pretty enough, somebody's bullying you online or in real life, somebody creator to creator like is tearing you down in your comments and spamming you and being a troll and whatever it is in your life, whenever somebody or something is trying to tear you down, don't let it tear you down, let it fuel you up, let it push you forward. For me, I always look at situations like that and instead of being like, woe is me, he's right, I'm never gonna be able to do all these things, let, look at all the other things I'm never gonna be able to do, I was like, okay, he's telling me I can't do something, I'm gonna prove him wrong. Not to actually prove him wrong, he's blocked me. I have no way of ever hearing from him again and it's not about him. I wouldn't want to go on a date with him even if I could change his mind. I want to prove him wrong to prove myself right. To prove to myself that nobody does get to define my limits but me. And that's true for anybody, whether you're disabled or not. You are the only one who knows what your limits are. You are the only one who knows what you are capable of. So don't let anybody tear you down. Let them push you forward. Take their negativity and turn it into something positive for yourself. Let it fuel your fire to do bigger and better things, to go higher in life, to reach more, to achieve, to come up with new dreams and goals for yourself. And I think it's truly the best way you can deal with any form of hate or negativity in your life is to say, you know what? I can take your negative comment and I can make it into something positive for my own life and for my own self and to improve my situation. I've done that many times in my life, whether it be with this situation or with negativity on YouTube or any other number of things. It really is the best way you can handle it and I encourage all of you to try to do so in your own life and it's not easy at times, but you'll be amazed at what you can achieve when you, when you really take things and move in that positive direction with them instead of leaning into the negative. And yeah, just know that you can do whatever the hell you want to do just because you say you can. Get out there and find a way. I believe in you and you just need to believe in yourself and it doesn't matter what anybody else's doubts are. If you know you can do it, you go out and you do it. And um, yeah, be your own cheerleader and find a Braden.
Um, so thank you, Matthew from Tinder, for letting me feel empowered, for helping me meet my best friend and gain a new cool life experience. Appreciate you more than you know. If you want another story time, you can click up here for this one. And if you want to learn about 10 things that do make me feel disabled, you can click over here. All right, thank you guys, and I'll see you next time.